The majority of visible light LEDs cannot generate light at the voltage of below 1.5 volt. This limits the application of such LEDs in the low voltage devices, specifically those fed off galvanic cells with a voltage of below 1.5 volt. A simple device called a voltage transducer, which transforms the low voltage level into the high one, can be easily made at home. Especially popular today are the transformers with an inductive storage, i.e. that use a simple throttle. To assemble the required LED power supply circuit, we would first of all need the LED itself, and we will build on the rest from there. A ferrite ring, 0.2 or 0.3 mm conductor, wire and resistor. This is basically it. Besides, we don't need to bother looking for the needed components. We can extract all of them from the old electronics. For example, the wire can be taken from the old Russian television cards, which are bound in all kinds of coils and throttles. If you have no ferrite tree at home, it can be found on the printed circuit boards or the power supply units for old computers. And as for the resistor, we could easily go with a Russian one, like the KT315, or the more popular nowadays, 2N3904, 2N4401. The resistor is normally selected at the time of assembly. Its only function is current limitation, while its power makes no difference whatsoever. The first stage that is most time-consuming is winding the throttle. We we'll take an old coil, which we can use to get the wire, unwind it, fold it into two, and then wind the throttle using this double wire. To make the process easier, we we'll twist the two free outputs together. Now let's take the ferrite ring, insert it onto the wire, so that it folds into two again, and then start winding the wire onto the ferrite ring. Try doing it evenly, so that the wire would be proportionally distributed and at the same distance from the wind. We wind the throttle until the core is entirely filled. This is approximately 25 winds. We now need to remove the excessive conductor length. What do we have here? We have two windings, like on a transformer. For the next stage, we will connect one wire from one winding to the other wire of the parallel winding. Next was strip, tin, and solder the two conductors. Now comes the turn of a rather important power element in our assembly. We solder the transistor. One of the throttle outputs needs to be soldered to a transistor collector. And we solder the limiting resistor to the other throttle output. The second resistor output needs to be soldered to a transistor base. The middle throttle output is a power supply source plus. Now the transistor emitter is a mass and a place where we will solder it to the power supply source. In this case, we'll also just go ahead and solder the battery chamber here. The plus goes to the middle throttle output, the minus to a transistor emitter. The last thing we need to solder is the LED. We know the basing of LED. 
the anode and the cathode. The LED cathode is soldered to the mesh, the LED anode to transistor collector. Let us check the margin accuracy once again. The power supply source plus needs to be soldered to the middle throttle output, where one winding is connected to the opposite conductor of the other, that is, to the antiphase. Then one throttle output goes to a transistor collector, and the other opposite one through the limiting resistor onto a transistor phase. Now we move on to the LED. The cathode is connected to a power supply minus to a transistor emitter. The anode goes to a transistor collector. Let us put a battery into the battery chamber. We can make sure that our transformer operates off a regular battery. Now why don't we try and complicate the circuit a little? We'll need a fast diode or a short key diode along with 220 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. What do we do next? We unsolder the LED's anode from the transistor and solder the short key diode to the circuit break. Why would we need this? We can now use electrolytic capacitor that we insert in parallel to the LED to adjust voltage by increasing the LED brightness. See how the LED lights up. We then make a parallel connection with respect to the LED. We connect the capacitors plus to the output of the short key diode and the minus to the power supply source. We see that the light of the LED becomes brighter. Why do we need discrete mounting at the time of the initial transformer assembly? First of all, the adjustment resistor can be used to limit the current. Select its upper range within 15 to 20 mA when fed off of the galvanic cell. And thus, the electrolytic capacitor can be used to adjust the output voltage, increase or decrease the LED's brightness. Which one of these options is more suitable is for you to decide. And do keep in mind that the assembly can be decreased by several times using the component's chip.